Hey, welcome to the SCHS Works Podcast. This is episode nine, um, and I'm your host, Mr. Soden. Hey, today it's uh, it's just me in the studio here, uh, no guests, uh, but I want to take a moment to run down through some things that I believe are extremely important now that we are at the midway point in the school year. Um, so we're going to talk final exams. We're going to talk summer school. We're going to talk attendance um, and volunteer hours. But before we get into the, the heavy stuff here, let's talk about some things that are going on in the building. Um, right now, spring sports registration is open on Family ID. Uh, we've got baseball, softball, track, boys volleyball over at Blue Ridge. Uh, that boys volleyball is ninth to 12th grade. But uh, spring sports, if you're interested, sign up on Family ID. We will host a free physical day for anyone that needs one. Um, and that physical day is going to be March 1st. So uh, you can get physical when you're here at school. No cost to you or your parents or guardians. Uh, but you need to be signed up before that so that we can schedule it. Uh, the first day of, of practice is March 4th. Um, so at that time, we will shut down uh, the registration and our teams will, will pretty much be closed there. Um, but we're excited for spring. Um, hopefully we get a little bit of a dry spring so we can get some of these games and contests in. So while we're talking about extracurriculars, we need to give a huge congratulations to Alex Hall. Alex Hall last week was called up to regional band. She will now have the opportunity to audition for states. Um, and, and that's just a heck of a cool thing. Um, and it's, it's cool to see because Alex sure has put in the work. Um, and I would say over the last year, she's really realized, all right, hey, if I want to take this someplace, I've got to kick it up a level. And she has. Um, she's reaching out to some people in the community um, who have helped some of our students in the past. And, and she's taking uh, full advantage of that. Um, so just a huge congratulations to Alex. It's great to see. Um, Alex, I don't know if you know this, but uh, Mr. Woke came to see me this morning, and he was sharing some plans for next fall that got me really excited. Now, I don't want to you know, spoil any surprise or anything like that, but he's got this picture in his mind of something that he wants to see occur for pet band next year. Um, and he is stoked about it, and just his excitement on a Monday morning made me excited. So more to come on that, but let's get into it. So hey, mid midway through the year, here we are. Report cards came home, parent-teacher conferences were had. You know, the dust has kind of settled from that. Um, but now is a time in which students really need to move. They need to move if their grades aren't quite where they need to be, if they're having some issues with time management, if they're having some issues with organization, um, if, they're, if they're just struggling, which, hey, at the end of the day, a productive struggle is a good struggle. So I don't use that word lightly. I don't have any kind of negative connotation. The only way we're going to grow in life is if we are in that sweet spot, that, that you know, productive struggle. So a struggle is a good thing. However, what we want to avoid is we want to avoid the beginning of the fourth quarter, a situation where you have backed yourself into a corner where it's almost impossible to come out of. So now is the time to take a pulse of your grades, to take a pulse of the work that you're putting in, of where you sit academically, and determine what do I need to do so that at the beginning of the fourth quarter, I haven't dumped a whole load of stress onto myself. What do I have to do so that I put myself strategically in a position that makes it easy for me not to attend summer school? Because that's ultimately our goal. And I can tell you, year after year, there are some students that they hit that fourth quarter and they realize that they have things that they need to change and they change them. They make the adjustments. and. In fourth quarter, they knock it out of the park, but it's just a little bit too late. So I'm here, really my message is, make those moves now. You've got half the year ahead of you. 
Um, if you make those moves now and you start to knock it out of the park, it won't be too late. And you can avoid summer school. But hey, that's a great transition. So well, I'm going to fully admit I do not have summer school completely planned out for this summer yet. I mean, it is only February. I want to give you a glimpse of what summer school most likely will look like. And uh, that, that's really going to be based off of what we did last year. So last year with summer school, it was 100% virtual. Um, there were no in-person sessions. But summer school last year started uh, right about June 19th, and it went through July 21st. Um, so it was a, a good chunk of the summer. Um, and throughout that time, it's not easy. It's not an hour here, an hour there. Um, it, is, it is a couple hours dedicated towards a course. Now, you're sitting back, you might be wondering, hey, can I take you know, three or four classes in summer school? No, no, absolutely not. Um, in order to qualify for summer school, you have to have over 60, and you can only take a maximum of two courses for summer school. That's it. So you can remediate two courses. And you've got to, again, have over that 60. So summer school, it's an online platform. It's you know approximately six weeks in length. It is, I would say, two hours per class a day. So you're looking at per class 10 hours a week. Um, it's not fun. Uh, and, and quite honestly, it's just something that in some aspects can be avoided. Um, obviously, others it, it can't, but summer school is one of those things that, that will eat up a bulk of your time uh, when you may want to be working. You may want to be you know, swimming with friends. Um, and really, here we are midpoint in the year saying, make the changes so that you don't put yourself in this position. Because along with the time commitment, uh, summer school, there's, there's quite a hefty cost involved in summer school as well. Last year, the cost per course was $150 to students. Um, now, obviously, the school, we paid 50 bucks per student towards it. Um, and so that was kind of our, our 75, 25 breakdown. Uh, but th that can get pretty expensive in a hurry. I mean, if you got two courses, there's $300 you're out uh, really for, for something that most of the time you can control by doing what you need to do now. Yes, there will be those situations where you're doing what you can and you just don't quite make it by. That happens. But I would hazard a guess of 80 to 90 percent of the time if you're doing what you have to do now that means time management that means organization skills that means spending time with teachers asking questions doing your homework not when you're sitting in homeroom but in your study hall or at home you a hundred percent can avoid that cost of summer school because you will be passive you know, one of the things that, as a student who goes to summer school, can look back on is how many times did I sit in a study hall and maybe I didn't take full advantage of that study hall. And now I'm shelling out $150. That's quite a few lawns that I'm going to have to mow to make up for that. But the good news is here we are at a point in time where you can make things change. You can make sure you're, you're on track. So... Let's transition a little bit. We're talking about summer school. Um, one of the big things that's going to impact grades is obviously final exams. Here in the high school, final exams, they're worth 10% of a student's GPA. Uh, and, you know, over the course of, I'd say, the last 10 years, most final exams in this building have been a traditional exam. You know, a double 45-minute class period, a test in front of you, whether that be uh, written or whether that be multiple choice. Uh, but, but we're kind of pushing this year. We're pushing this year to give more flexibility to teachers to say, do you want to do a traditional final exam? 
do you want to do some kind of project-based assessment or do you want to do a combination? Um, so this year we are not going to run our standard final exam schedule where every class is doubled up. Um, and we're really, you know, taking some of the control away from administration and giving it to the individual classroom teacher who knows what's best for their classroom um, and say, what do you want to do? Do you want to do a project and a test or one or the others? Uh, because we really understand that, you know, there's a good percentage of our students who are not going to go off to college. And do they necessarily need that 100 question test uh, to prove that they're going to be successful in life? And, and we clearly, if you have any common sense, you know that is a resounding no. No, you don't need to, to score well on a 100 question um, civics test to know that you're going to succeed in life if you have those other skills. So we're trying to take a look at what we're doing here and make some adjustments. Now, obviously, if you're heading to, to college, yeah, you need to know how to take those exams. You need to know how to deal with that, that pressure, how to prepare for them. Um, so see, you will see some changes on the final exams that are being given this year. Um, and I'm excited for those changes because I think it's really honestly changes that are going to benefit our students. Okay, midway through the year. We're at that point where we need to start really talking about attendance. And I know it's especially tough with the, uh, the flu that's been impacting our students. We're, you know, we're seeing students who are out uh, three, four, five days um, in a row, uh, and they're just getting hit hard with the flu. And you know, you feel for them 100%. You know you can't avoid it. Um, but you know that's kind of wreaking havoc on some individuals' attendance. Uh, so really, really, really quick rundown. Uh, we, I know we talked with Mrs. Vale earlier in the year on one of these podcasts about the attendance and we got into the nitty gritty details, but short and sweet, um, from absence one through 10, parents can write an excuse. Hey, they were sick. That can be an email sent to Mrs. Vale or, or Mrs. Burns and, and that counts. From anything Absence number 11 on, technically, we need a doctor's note. That's what state law uh, states. Now listen, if, if you're sitting here with 11 absences, all right, you need that doctor's note for that 11th absence. But is Mrs. Vale or Mr. Soden, am I going to come after you for one day where you don't have a doctor's note? Absolutely not. Um, you know, we're, we're reasonable people. The problem becomes when you hit four, five, six absences after those 10. So now we're looking at 15, 16 days. You don't have doctor's notes. Um, so by the letter of the law, they are unexcused absences and you are truant. Um, do we in some cases, you know, look at legal means uh, to try to remediate this? Yeah, absolutely. Um, but is it every single case? No, of course not. Um, so You've got your, your 10 day mark. After 10 days, you need doctor's notes. But you also have your 15 day mark. And your 15 day mark is where you start to owe us volunteer hours. You miss time at school. So for every day that you miss after 15, that's six hours of volunteer time. And that can be volunteer time anywhere. Really, we're just looking um, to keep the responsibility on the student and say, hey, we understand that things happen. We understand that maybe you caught this bug in it and it really knocked you out um, and it you know ate up a bunch of your days with this illness uh, but at the end of the day you know there's still an expectation that that you dedicate a certain amount of time towards your schooling so we're just gonna ask you to make that up by doing something for the community and it can be something um, of your choice um, you know we're not gonna dress you in orange and put you along the streets and make you clean up trash and hang a sign up that says you know, I miss 15 days of school. No, of course not. We want it to be something where you feel good about yourself after the experience. Like, yeah, hey, this is really stupid. I don't want to do these intense volunteer hours. But then after the experience, we're hoping you're like, hey, that was kind of cool. I volunteered. I helped out. I felt like I was part of the community. And really, that's to me the hidden gem of some of these attendance hours that that we that we require. Um, you know, over over the last couple of weeks, I've had a couple of situations arise where you know people are reaching out saying like hey 
you know, family pet died. Can you please excuse them? Um, and I feel cold and a little bit heartless when I say no, but it's just the law. Um, and at the end of the day, we know that we have these, you know, your first 10 days, a parent can write an excuse for. You have those 10 days. So if a special circumstance like a pet dying and you need to take the day off, if you haven't used up those 10 days, by all means do it. Um, you know, you even have a little bit of flexibility after, after that 10 day mark. All right, Mrs. Vale is probably uh, listening to this saying, oh, Mr. Soden, don't tell them there's any flexibility because then they're gonna take advantage of it. But again, you know, if you're day number 11 out of school and you don't have a doctor's note, we're not coming after you. Um, like I said earlier, all right, if it's day number 15 and you haven't had doctor's notes for five of them, that's a little bit of a different situation. But, you know, at the end of the day, we truly believe, uh, like most parents, having students here in the building is a good thing. Um, allowing them to engage in the productive struggle that is education. And um, we understand that sometimes things, you know, get in the way of that in terms of illnesses and, and family struggles. Uh, but don't forget, once a year we have our independent study uh, that can help students who, as long as they get their work made up and turned back in, you know, I can cover any kind of absences from uh, four to six days in length. Uh, but again, that's once a year. All right. So attendance, we're starting to have those conversations. Um, and, you know, if, if we're if we're looking at your attendance and we're getting close to that 15 hour mark and we're halfway through the year, I'm concerned. I'm concerned because double that. And here we are at 30 at the end of the year. Um, that's over our, our 25 day limit. Uh, you hit 25 days. Uh, we're going to have to sit down and have some serious conversations. Uh, so watch your tenants get here as much as you can but we understand that especially our seventh and eighth graders are being absolutely decimated by this flu um two weeks ago there were some classes where you know half the class was out sick all right so we understand it we get it do what you can all right enough of the heavy stuff let's close up with a couple little things here semi-formal the semi-formal is coming up on the 17th Tickets are on sale today. I hear there's going to be a rush on tickets potentially Wednesday because with the, the most likely snow day that's coming on Tuesday, ticket sales obviously will not be occurring, and that's going to lead to a rush um, on Valentine's Day on, uh, on Wednesday there. There's also going to be a rush on carnations being sold by Saab during the school day for $2. So, hey, parents. Send your kids with a couple bucks. Ask them to buy some flowers. Give them to you um, as a special Valentine's Day treat and support Saab while you're at it. The other thing that we need to highlight is our seniors. Our seniors are going to be doing their mock interviews um, on Thursday of this week. Uh, originally scheduled for Tuesday, uh, but with the snow, we're pushing it. But uh, these senior mock interviews are pretty impressive. So we have Michael Graves from DT Midstream coming in. We have uh, Nikki Morgan from Lackawanna College. We have Sandra Marvin from Barnes Casson Hospital and our own Mr. Dan Maurer from the elementary school coming in to run our seniors through the paces of an interview. So each student, uh, each senior will get two different interviews on that day where they have to sit down with somebody that they don't know and, and conduct themselves in a manner so that they can get a job. Um, love the fact that they get two of them. Love the fact that they get this experience uh, because it allows them to feel the nerves. Uh, it allows them to uh, get some feedback after the first interview and then go into the second interview uh, with, you know, with a little bit of experience, calm down a little bit and really end on a positive note. But in years past, our students have taken this extremely seriously. They, uh, they show up dressed to impress uh, cover letters, resumes, um, and it's just a heck of a cool experience that they run through their their uh, senior year English class. So huge thank you goes out to those community partners who show up year after year to uh, put these students through their paces and get them some real world skills here. Susquehanna, try to stay warm, try to stay out of that snow, that snow and uh, really enjoy your day. We'll see you later.